everybody. Welcome along to episode 57 of Percussion Discussion. Hope you're all well and happy out there. It's great to see everybody returning to gigging and uh, studio work and just generally being out and about. Please check out our social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, our world famous YouTube channel where you can find all of our interviews. Uh, and if you wouldn't mind subscribing, it only takes a couple of seconds uh, and it all helps. So, so please do that if you get the chance. Thank you very much. Now then, if you prefer to um, hear our conversations on the go, then you can find all of our interviews in podcast form on Spotify and, of course, on Apple uh, Podcasts. So uh, if that's your thing, then download them and listen wherever you want to listen to them. Fabulous. On to today's guest. I am absolutely thrilled to have this lady with us. Um, she's an incredible drummer. Um, she's been playing for, she's been professional since, since school, pretty much. Um, she started out her career uh, playing for Mika throughout his huge success a few years ago. Uh, she's gone on to play for the incredible Simple Minds and is still still holding that drum seat. Um, she's um, played with a few surprising musicians along the way too, which uh, well, they surprised me anyway, and I'm sure they will you too. So it gives me huge pleasure to welcome the fabulous Sharice Osei. No problem. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It really is. And, and of course, our first female guest. Finally, we've got a yeah. female guest. So there we go. <laughs> So awesome. You... I'm, I'm representing. Excellent. No, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So it's, this is really cool. So thanks again for doing it. Really appreciate it. Now, obviously, the last kind of 15 months or so have been a, a challenging time for anybody in the arts and music. How have you got on? Have you managed to keep busy? Yes. In a short answer, yes. Um, I've been um, extremely lucky that I've been able to kind of keep busy. Um, and yeah, I've been very fortunate, like, um, you know, with Simple Minds, obviously our touring got stopped uh, when COVID kind of hit. Um, and we were actually on the road uh, doing a European tour, like an arena tour, which was going really well. Yeah. And we got sent home, uh, you know, effectively uh, mid tour. Well, actually not even mid tour. We did two weeks of the tour oh. and the tour was meant to last three months. Yeah. <laughs> so we did two weeks. Went home and we still haven't been out since then. So that was, uh, what was that, last March? Yeah, whenever yeah. whenever lockdown, the first lockdown kind of happened. Um, so, yeah, so like since then, like um, I'm very lucky because in my back garden, I've got a studio, which is mm -hmm. where I am now. Um, so, like, yeah, with Simple Minds, uh, we just finished, well, I'd say about six months ago, we sort of finished recording a new album. Um, so I did that all from my home studio. Wow. So we were still able to be creative and, you know, still make music. Obviously, you know, we're not out playing live, but we were mm -hmm. still able to do what we love doing. Um, so yeah, we finished that. So that's, I think it'll be out next year now. Um, and that's still ongoing actually. So yeah, so we're, we're doing, yeah, been recording with, you know, with them. Um, so I've basically been doing, yeah, a lot of, you know, like a lot of remote recording sessions from yeah. my home studio and then also teaching. So I teach, so I teach from here. So yeah, I do a lot of online lessons mm. uh, via Zoom and Skype and stuff. Um, yeah, I, I've also been working with um, this film composer called Lorne Balfe. Um, I'm not sure if you saw my, yeah, you probably saw my Instagram. Uh, I did. Yeah so, <laughs> yeah. so we just had our first film out, my first ever film score that I've done. So I did that with Lorne. We recorded it about eight months ago in yeah. Abbey Road, Studio One with, you know, the full London Symphony Orchestra, which was absolutely amazing. So it's the soundtrack for Black Widow, the yeah. latest. So the new Marvel Avengers film, which is out now in the cinemas. Um, so that was incredible. <laughs> That's my first ever film. Um <laughs> Congratulations. You know, starting... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> first first yeah. of many, that's okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, so it's been really great. Yeah, it's been amazing working with the Lord, you know, um, with Lawn and doing that kind of work, more orchestral kind of, you know, mm. yeah, yeah, more orchestral kind of stuff. Um, so I'm doing, yeah, yeah, I'm doing a few things with Lawn, a few TV things and a few other things. So yeah, I've been doing a lot of that. So as I said, mainly recording. Um, I've got a band as well that I'm in, like a new band project that I've been involved with, um, sort of writing um, with some, you know, some musician friends of mine. Um, so basically, I'd be keeping myself busy. Yes, Good. like I've, I've yeah. been managing to, yeah, do a lot of stuff that maybe I wouldn't have been able to do had I been on the road. Sure. So I was just, sure. you know, trying to keep positive um, and... 
yeah just try and get positive and try mm. and do things that you love i'm still lucky that i you know that i can i've got the studio i can still play drums um I've, I've had time to practice as well and actually work on myself which you don't normally have no no um on tour so i've been having drum lessons when i can and so um yeah so it's been a positive time even though it's been um, sure you know difficult <laughs> yeah i mean it, it I mean, I think most people, most musicians have, have managed in one way or the other to keep going. Um, I mean, it must have been heartbreaking, uh, devastating to to get, you know, heart, so such a short period into the tour and have it all sort of torn from under you. Because I get, I get you must build yourself up to it and look forward to it. And then it's, you know, it's ripped from under you, if you like. It was, yeah, no, it was, it, it, it was very, it was really gutting, obviously, mm. and really disappointing. Um, but I think as a musician, one of the things you learn um, sort of working in the industry is that you've got to be flexible. Yeah. And you've got to be able to adapt quickly as well. So mm. I, I was just like, okay, this, okay, this, you know, the touring's ended, you know, okay, what am I going to do? Okay, right, I'm going to teach, you know, you have to just have that kind of yeah. mindset, enable to just I think survive as a musician sure. and that has, you have to have that kind of nature about you. So I, do, I was like, okay, this is a challenge. <laughs> I'm very disappointed about this, but there's no point moping around. Cause I could yeah. just, uh, well, I did mope for a bit and let's not lie. I got home from the tour. I think we, <laughs> you know, the whole band, I think we were all a bit mopey for, you know, <laughs> for a bit, yeah. you know, you're on such a high, as you know, like when you play gigs and when you're on tour, you're on a real high and you get this adrenaline. So you come home and you kind of, you know, you do kind of go, Oh, you know, you do get a bit, yeah, a, a bit, bit depressed in a way so yeah let's pick yourself back up so yeah it, it was difficult it was definitely a challenge picking yourself back up and going right okay what am i gonna do you know so um, yeah. but yeah definitely disappointing <laughs> yeah i mean we, we can allow you a little bit of a sulk for that i mean i'm sure there's <laughs> lots of people been in the same boat but you've yeah. got to stay positive haven't you you know there's there's when you think about it there's there's far worse things been going on thankfully i think there's more than light at the end of the tunnel now we're, we're kind of heading out of this fingers crossed and um but can you imagine you know you've got you've got your studio there and i've said this to a lot of the people who i've spoken to can you imagine if this pandemic was 20 years ago even 15 years ago with the technology then there's no way any of this remote stuff could have been done can you imagine how terrible it would have been you know on yes. can you imagine talking about online lessons for example you know and exactly. even five years ago it'd be no chance no exactly you're completely correct i'm in a way it's 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 it's, it's good that's happened in this at this time i just say yeah. the technology is so advanced that we are able to communicate online we've got facetime you know and it's become the norm which is fantastic so mm. yeah i'm able to do drum lessons yeah. online if you said that to me 10 years ago i'd be like what you can't do that <laughs> you have to be in person like what are you talking you know i'd be like what are you talking about <laughs> oh that's it, crazy this so you're correct like thank god in, in a way that yeah. it happened at, at this time you know so Absolutely. yeah fortunate about that. yeah and, and and how i mean speaking i, I you know it, it, I, I guess you, you teach quite a lot when you can when when your schedule allows how do you do you have to find a, a way of adapting to do to do the online teaching? Are you quite comfortable with it? It's, it's, it's a different kind of method, isn't it? I, I find when it's online. Yeah, no, yeah, you are right. It, it took probably about a month or so to kind of get used to the online format. Mm. Um, and what I had to do, like I bought some different, you know, I bought a few webcams yeah. so that my students can see, you know, like I have a camera on top of me so you can see a bird's eye view, one on my mm. feet, one on the side, one at the front. So I had to think, okay, like, you know, how is this going to work? So obviously drumming, as you know, you know, it's a physical thing sure. um, and you need to be able to see what the person is doing. So I had to kind of think how this would best work for the online lessons and mm. then you have to yeah it took a while to get used to it um but now I'm, I'm pretty used to it now it's been of course. you know a year and a bit however long it's been so like um yeah I'm pretty used to it now but yeah it did the, 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 yeah, definitely, yeah there was definitely a transition period because yeah. I've been teaching for I'd say like four or five years but they've always been in person really I, I had a few um actually I, I did have a few Skype lessons yeah um i had a guy in australia and somebody in hong kong and i did I, yeah about two or three that i did so obviously yeah. i then went to like full online so yeah it, it was definitely a transition sure. and you have to yeah it's a different approach you have to get used to talking to a computer <laughs> <laughs> rather than a person I mean, the, strange <laughs> of course and, and the good thing is now you're not um dependent on the area you live in anymore it's worldwide isn't it, it can, as you said it could be you know it could be anywhere in the world couldn't it you know which is great it's yeah, amazing no, I, yeah, no, it's incredible. I mean, all my students are all over the world. So I do, you know, um, yeah, northern uh, the States, um, Canada, Hong Kong, Australia, 
New Zealand. So wow. I have to kind of work with different people's time zones, which Oof. can be a bit tricky, but they're all over the place. My students are all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> Sweden as well, Europe, the UK. Just, Amazing. It's all over the place. Yeah. That's so I'm really quite lucky. Cool. But I, I love it though. It keeps it more interesting. You know, yeah. you, you hear about what's going on in everyone's country. Of course. Yeah, of <laughs> course. Going on in Sydney right now. You know, it's interesting. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the only thing, I mean, of course, when um, I've worked, as I'm sure you have, I've worked quite hard to uh, ensure that students are getting a good sound from my end, uh, you know, so hopefully yeah. they can hear. I use a lapel mic, uh, you know, and, and everything hopefully sounds good. But what you get back is something very different. <laughs> have you found that as well? That It's like, oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, I've had to say to some of my students, okay, you might have to buy a particular mic. They've got an iPad, you know, yeah. they use it. And drums, as you know, can distort, you know, at certain levels. So I've had yes. to like, yeah, a lot of my students are really cool. They're like, okay, so I'm like, you, no, you might have to buy, you know, like with the, you know, with like um, the iPad and iPhones and, and mm-hmm. even laptops, you know, you can buy quite cheap mics that, that mean the drums don't distort but you can still hear them yeah of course so um i say yeah technology as you say that's been the biggest kind of blessing yeah, really absolutely that that's available you know and, and of course stuff is that cheap equipment is that cheap these days there's no excuse for having bad gear anymore i don't think you know you can there's certain budget brands which do a great job out there so yeah, i think exactly. you know yeah so there's no excuses this you know gone are the days when you have to spend thousands and thousands i think but uh, yeah anyway, exactly so that's a good thing. exactly that's yeah well look let's if you don't mind let's go back to kind of where it all caught fire for you i mean what are your first memories of drums and music whichever way around that was you know yeah i guess um so i um i mean my parents uh, they're not like professional musicians or anything like that but they um they're big they're huge music lovers um so as a child growing up music was everywhere it was all over the house it was in the car music was part of our lives I guess the start of love of music came from my parents um m- yeah my mum used to play a bit of guitar my dad played the violin and my dad's actually an actor as well so he was oh, wow. from the sort of entertainment industry sort of background um but yeah they love music and me and my brother there's two of us we grew up just loving music and it being a big part of our lives mm. um and when I was yeah I got my first kit when I was like five but it wasn't you know it was, it was just a it was just a toy kit yeah you know, sure. like Mickey Mouse um, a little kit um and one day it disappeared and i said mum where's the kit gone she said oh your dad stepped on it it's broken i said it's broken i said how how is it broken it's in the cupboard i said what <laughs> so <laughs> obviously i was annoying them <laughs> a lot so she put it away in the cupboard so when i was 11 i got to secondary school and um i heard that i, I and my secondary school you know which is a normal school in north mm-hmm. london in southgate sure. and uh and they had low their five drum kits at the school and i remember looks, go, arriving and going seeing the drum kits again ah there it is <laughs> and uh, then i heard an announcement saying there was a drum club at, you know every thursday lunchtime at school and i thought oh that's that sounds that sounds cool it sounds you know yeah maybe i'll go along so i was 11 um it's the first week of school and i remember that i remember that, yeah like clear as day the first time sitting down at the drum kit and i think it was just a you know like a beginner's kit and um mm. you know it was just playing something really really simple you know i think it was just literally like you know there's off sorry ha! hold on that's it there we go so there go oh here you go what's that what was that? We were just doing, just doing that beat, and we sure. all taught it, and then just going. And uh, well, I remember it, and I remember I just felt like the penny in that one moment. The penny dropped, and I felt so happy, but the happiest I've ever been in my life. I just <laughs> straight away went, "I'm a drummer. I'm going to yeah. do this for the rest of my life. That's it. I'm done." <laughs> in that one moment, that's oh, it. That's just amazing, though, isn't it? it? The light yeah. bulb. Yeah, the light yeah, bulb. Yeah, it was moment. the light bulb moment. Yeah. And I remember and I just felt I was just so happy and mm. comfortable and I found I felt like I was at home. Yeah. It was just a really it was quite I guess it's quite profound for an eleven year old <laughs> to feel that kind of way. Too right. But I did. Yeah. And um and the funniest thing was so that day I stayed behind after the drum club and just to just to look at the drum, I wasn't even playing them, just to mm. stare at them. I remember looking at the hi hats <laughs> going, God, what's that? What's that for? You know, <laughs> just looking at it, just staring at it. And then another girl had also stayed behind that day. I looked over and I said, oh, well, you know, what's what's your name? She said, oh, you know, Emily. And I said, hold on a minute, you're in my class. And there are eight classes in a year. Right. So we're in the same class. And I said, oh, do you like, do you like the drums? I said, yeah, 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 I do. I said, all right. I said, do you want to come back tomorrow? And ask the teacher if we can come back. Just 
just come and play you know yeah yeah so we basically fell in love with drums on the same day <laughs> at school so we became best friends and used to come in and uh and yeah so basically we used to come into school at 7 a.m we'd get there before the teachers would we practice for an hour and a half before school started we practice at break time for 20 minutes lunch time for an hour after school for, for two or three four hours you know like like until they kicked us out yeah. we did this every single day for like until school so for like five or six years just we were just wow. obsessed with, with the drums and we just we just loved it absolutely loved it so emily has now become also uh you know like has a career in drumming and is a session drummer as well oh that's cool Davies. oh yeah, yeah yeah of course yeah so she's my best wow. friend so we grew up playing together and that's how we yes yeah, so we're like old best friends um, that's insane she, isn't it yeah <laughs> We both kept, went on the same career path, strangely. Wow. But she plays with Kim Wilde. She does The Voice Kids. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's she's done a lot. Of, she, she does a lot of, yeah, has a really successful sort of, you know, remote recording business. So, yeah, so it's great. We both sort of followed our, our dreams, as it were. So do you think you've kind of both pushed each other, uh, you know, maybe without knowing or realising? Do you think you've kind of pushed each other to do this? And, and there's kind of no looking back. It was like, we've got to do it now. Yeah, no, exactly. We were, we've been there for each other the whole way and we have we always push each other. We'd meet up at 14 and have conversations go, right, how many bands are you in? Okay, I'm only in two. Okay, well, I'm in three. This is not enough, Sharice. We'd be like, look, we need to ramp it up, okay? So we did our grades together. We did everything. We're like, right, wow. okay, we need to do... We were just... We did. I mean, that's part of the reason I think we were able to do what we have done because we have a really good support network mm. and we both have the same the same drum teacher mm. um, who we still have now <laughs> a guy called mike dolbear oh yeah yes yeah. um of course yeah been our teacher since we were 15 and still now so we're i'm now 34 so it's, it's been a long time Poor mike <laughs> <laughs> he's had to put up with both of us he must be time. he must be very proud of you both he really must you know to have such, yeah. such star yeah. students you know <laughs> yeah i mean yeah mike's really cool do you know what i mean he doesn't like to say too much but yeah i yeah he's he's, he's he's i think he's very proud i think it's because he's been with us since the beginning yeah so and he's and he and it's part of the reason we've done so well is also because of mike he's kind of guided us through yeah. our careers choices to make think mm. gigs to take gigs not to take you know getting endorsement deals you know mike's been more like a mentor to yeah you know to both of us really well he um, certainly knows the industry yeah. doesn't he so you know yeah Exactly. So he's been yeah. such a guiding sort of light mm. for us, a guiding force. So yeah, he. I think he's. I think he's proud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. And, and I have to ask, right? What What is Drum Club? I've never heard of this thing before. Drum Club. It oh, sounds really? like some slice of heaven somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, it was just. It was just the, the, the funniest thing was at our school. The person leading Drum Club wasn't even a drummer. He was a keyboard player. <laughs> He was a music teacher who yeah. could play like basic stuff on drums. But he's so drum club was every you met every week, every Thursday lunchtime, and you'd all sit around in a circle and you'd play. He'd teach you a beat, not even with proper drumsticks. It was with these <laughs> really small mallets that were <laughs> not even drumsticks. So we did play drums with drumsticks. It was with these tiny mallets. <laughs> Wow. So it was quite, yeah, it was, it was just drum club. Yes. Yeah, so it was every, it was for like half an hour every, every week. So that's how we kind of got started. Um, and, and yeah. And, and that teacher that, that spotted that me and Emily had a sort of yeah. passion. He, you know, was like girls, you know, you, you know, he, in fact, he was the person that kind of, he's the reason we play drums today mm. because he said, yeah, he said, you know, girls, you know, like he sort of did lots of school concerts. He said, you know, I've got a school, you know, we've got a school choir. We need, we need a drummer. We're playing all these songs. Yeah, we sure. Want, I want you girls to be the drummer. We're like, well, we we never played a gig before in front of the whole school. No, it's like, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, you are. You're you're. We need a drummer. You girls can play. You're gonna learn these are the songs. Go away and learn them. Uh, both of you will play. We'll alternate you for different songs. Um, so, so he he roped us in to being the drummers for the school bands essentially. Yeah. Summer concerts. Our school was very musical. Sure. Um, quite quite yeah very because our school wasn't very good academically at all it was terrible it was, it was quite low in the league tables was not a good school in that sense but because of this i think they pushed the arts with yeah the that's good. <laughs> so <laughs> music art there was art music everywhere lots of different cultures lots of different languages it was a very kind of art artistic art, arty school if you like but it was, just, yeah. it was just a normal school it wasn't anything it wasn't a special music school or anything yeah. like that we just got lucky i think with just fantastic teachers absolutely um, yeah yeah but drum club sounds, I've never heard of it. Is this a, is it a thing in other schools? I've never. 
Maybe. I don't know. It was just in our school, so I don't know. I think they still do, actually, <laughs> in, in, in my school. They still wow. uh, sort of push the music side of things, which is fantastic. <laughs> That's um, brilliant. Yeah, really? so it's Broomfield School. I should give a shout to shout out to Broomfield School in, yeah. in Southgate. Uh, fantastic school, um, and it's still, it's still going. Um, <laughs> Great stuff. Like, I mean, I, I have this vision of kids from fame. I don't know if you probably, you probably can't remember fame, but it was, uh, you know. I have seen it, though, yeah. <laughs> just music going on everywhere. No work, just, just, just music. So it's, uh, but, uh, hey. Great stuff. So, so you've, you've, you've left school. Did you, yeah. did you carry on education, or did you just go out and decide that was it? I'm going to play some drums. Well, um, I got very lucky that, um, so I was doing my first year of A-levels um, and I went for an, I went for, well, I, I got, I, I got this gig, basically. Mm. I got um, my first ever kind of professional gig. Um, so yeah, while I was at school, I was in bands, I was in school bands, I had a yeah. band that I was in, in school. My first band was when I was 12 yeah. and we were called Fuse <laughs> and it was a three-piece rock kind of band and huh. we'd write together and we did, yeah, we'd gig around pubs, you know, like in uh, north london and um and then i started being in school yeah you know, i started being in bands outside of school when i was yeah. 16 my first yeah first kind of proper band uh, yeah, when I, yes when i was 16 it, it was like a heavy metal fresh <laughs> cool fresh metal band <laughs> as you do at 16 a lot of double kick um and we were called mantis and um it was with the guitarist from venom Remember oh the band gosh venom yes in the 80s yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's my yeah. So it was, it was the, yeah. The guitarist in Venom, like his stage name was Mantis. So he had his he had a side project. So I was in that band when I was sixteen. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm sad, but I remember the others were Kronos and Abaddon. Yeah, they were the, correct. Not not correct. that I'm some yeah, kind exactly. of metal no, no, exactly. geek. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, exactly. So the guitarist Mantis had his own band, and I was in that band. And then when I was seven, so that's when I was sixteen. When I was seventeen, I got asked to be in this band called The Faders, and we got yeah. signed to Universal to Polydor Records. And that's my first big break, if you like. That's my first uh, break into the industry. So I had to leave school. I was completing the last year of A levels as, as I got The Faders. So I was doing. We were doing meetings. We were doing um, playing showcases for the label. We were doing music videos whilst I was doing my a-levels and so i was like you know in meetings i was like writing down my french like stuff to do in the exam <laughs> tomorrow but at the same time like being in the band so that yeah so I, I yeah so i left school basically at 17 didn't do the last year of of a-levels um and just from from the faders we yeah that went on for two and a half years and yeah. we obviously we yeah we did quite well our first single got to number uh, 12 in, in the uk yeah. chart our second single got to number 21 we did you know music videos our first sure. one was in you know was in la in the same school that greece was filmed in and oh wow Britney spears uh hit me baby one more time yeah so that's what i was so yeah i went to la did the music video we were we, yeah we supported kenny clarkson we were in all the magazines mm. interviews we, yeah we, we, it was full on so that was yes yeah, so that was my first thing out yeah so that's how i kind of yes yes yeah, so i did leave school essentially yeah and I was wow that's that's now that's an education isn't it you know <laughs> At that point, you're ripping all your, your exam papers up going, I don't need this. I'm here. I've arrived. I've still got the mantis I thing did. in my head. You were full on yeah. metal, weren't you? That's, that's, that's Yeah. Wow. It was full on. Yeah, it was thrash. Yeah, more like thrash metal. Yeah, yeah. Um, really heavy, really heavy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really heavy stuff. All these lead singer had like dreads. Everyone had tattoos and piercings. Much older than me. They must be in their 30s and 40s. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. there like 16. Girl, um, our logo was 666. As right. you do. Um, <laughs> so it was yeah it was wicked like we did a lot of really cool gigs we did like quite a few like Earthshaker festival in germany of like yeah. fear factory halloween like we did some fantastic gigs you know it was a good experience <laughs> to kind of get me get me used to just gigging really and just learning yeah. as, as a drummer how to, my, my, you know, my mind is blown at the moment it really is so oh. I wasn't, <laughs> wasn't expecting to hear that today but there we go it's amazing so I, i'm guessing um uh, mika I'm, I'm thinking of the timeline. Mika must have appeared on the horizon pretty soon after that then, I guess. Yeah. So straight after the faders. So that mm. lasted about two and a half years. Yeah. Um, and when I was 18, um, I got a gig. So just before Mika, I got a gig doing a tour supporting Simply Red, actually, in this cool. kind of Swedish folk country band. So I did that. We supported Simply Red around the UK. And then when I was 19, I had an interview or a chat with Mika. And at this point, Mika was was, was no one. Mm -hmm. released anything yeah um all he had was was three songs on myspace 
MySpace. And uh, yeah, on MySpace. Exactly. <laughs> Back then it was MySpace. So we had three songs out on MySpace. And yeah, I had a chat with him and we got on really well. And he chose me to be his drummer. Mm-hmm. The rest of the band were quite a lot older. They were all like kind of experienced session players who yeah. had played in lo- with lots of other people. So I was the kind of newbie. Um, so Mika, I guess Mika, yeah, Mika took a chance on me, basically. Never done a session gig. Obviously, I've done gigs, but I yeah, never yeah. been a session drummer. So in the Faders, I was actually in the band. And, I, and so, yeah, he took a chance on me. And, um, yeah, so I ended up with him. And obviously, it went from, I think, from playing, like we supported The Feeling at Shepherd's Bush Empire. Um, and playing The Borderline was our first ever gig in right. Oxford Street. Tiny little pub yeah. with, like, nobody there. And it, in fact, it was mainly my friends. It was like 10, like <laughs> 10 people there. <laughs> to within the space of a year, we were playing 60,000 people wow. in Paris, in the rugby stadium in Paris. Yeah. So Mika just suddenly went, it just went mad. <laughs> he was number one in the UK. His, album, his first single, Grace Kelly, went to number one. We were all like, what? Like, we had no, we had no idea what was going to happen. No one knew how sort of how successful he was going to be. Um, so it was a crazy ride going yeah. from right at the beginning um to sort of he was a global superstar and so i toured with him for about seven and a half years yeah. we just toured the world he was just massive he was the num- at one point he was the number one artist in the in the entire world yeah he was <laughs> the a number ta- one yeah, album and i think a talented yeah. guy talented beyond belief and that that it must is, have been it's incredible it must have been so exciting to be on that kind of that roller coaster a roller coaster that just goes up rather than down you know yeah no exactly i didn't know what to i didn't know what was coming the, yeah. no one did so yeah it was it was incredible to be on this it was a roller coaster because there was no time to think about it it was just yeah. you're here you're there and we worked out like the first year and a half of being with mika we worked out that we'd been around the world eight and a half times wow. <laughs> because he was huge everywhere in yeah. every territory it was like oh you, the US was doing really well. Canada, yeah. okay, okay. Over in the Middle East, okay. In Australia, okay, number one. Europe was number one, okay. Uh, just everywhere. Korea, Hong Kong, China. We were like, Japan. <laughs> it was just, he was worldwide. It was in, we never stopped. Literally, mm. in the first two and a half years, I wasn't at home. Literally, I was away for two and a half years, solid tour. We toured one album for three years. Wow. <laughs> One set, yeah. We we That's... we throw in covers and things to kind yeah. of keep it and change stuff up to keep it fresh because it's the same songs, <laughs> you know. So it was um, must have been pretty tight. Mad. <laughs> yeah, well, by the end of it, yeah, <laughs> played the songs enough times. <laughs> uh, wow, I mean that. So. <laughs> obviously, I remember him clearly when he came out, and 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 yeah, you know, Grace Kelly was just the weirdest, most brilliant song ever, wasn't it? You know, and it, it was nothing else to really compare to it because it was in a genre all of its own really i suppose he was no he's incredible i mean he's he's an incredible writer incredible producer so he he works with a guy called greg wells who's actually now uh, also gone on to be a, a really huge producer in his own mm. right and he worked on the greatest showman he did the soundtrack wow. for the greatest showman okay. greg wells he's done yeah he's worked with everybody pink you name it greg greg is now one of the biggest producers but i worked with greg you know his first kind of big thing was was, was mika yeah um they did it together so it's kind of a joint effort and um it was just yeah they both were just fantastic musicians mika is honestly one of the most talented people i've ever mm. worked with you know yeah so again lucky to work with somebody of, of that that much talent you know, and we wow. kind of grew together. You know, I learned my craft as a session drummer yeah. from being with Mika. That's, that's where I learned to. I mean, to do the, that, the, yeah. the, the lifestyle uh, must have been a huge change as well. You know, uh, uh, you know, you're probably not in the back of a van anymore at this point, are you? You know, you're, you're probably turning left in aeroplanes and rather than turning right. And you know, it, and I guess did endorsements come at this point as well? Were you were you kind of getting endorsed by? whichever companies they were at the time yeah well, well yeah with Mika when he first started yeah I got my first in- I got my first endorsements with the faders actually. okay um and I was on like a trade deal endorsement with most of my companies yeah so Zildjian I was with Zildjian I was actually with DW actually I okay say too loud but I was with, <laughs> I was with DW first Won't tell um, and then when I got the Mika gig and obviously it he became huge then yeah that's when I went up to kind of the full endorsement show, I would sure. say, and I, I, went, I, went, I went with Tama Drums. Because uh, my first proper kit was actually a Tama kit, actually. Yeah. Um, so I've always loved Tama Drums. Um, and, yeah, so I've always had a – yeah, they just they just fit. 
Mm. I just I love the sound. I just yeah, it's just, just you know when you feel at home. Sure. I just yeah, it's just it's, it's my kit. Yeah. So yeah, so yes, yeah, so with Mika, I got all yeah, all the endorsements kind of happened sort of mid yeah, the beginning of when when yeah. Mika took off. Yeah, incredible. So it all kind of happened. So Vic Fur, Tama, yeah, you know, again, it's, I'm lucky to have such good deals. But it's fairy tale stuff, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, obviously you've got the, the talent to back it up no no question at all but it's still fairy tale kind of wow look look at this you know 60,000 people that's totally. insane isn't it but um it, it was it was definitely like as I say like yeah it, it's 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 you know it's 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 what I just love playing music and I just mm. wanted to do what I loved for a living you know and that's always been my wow. my aim <laughs> well the, the guy who who ran drum club must have been going my god <laughs> I must have done something right here. <laughs> well, he did. I haven't seen him. I hadn't seen him yeah. since that time. He, yeah. he only stayed at our school for about two years. Right. But he had such a big impact on me and my and Emily. And he actually, I saw him for the first time a few years ago. And I invited him. I, I played. He moved to Manchester. He's actually originally from Manchester. Okay. But he moved back there. And sure. he still teaches music. He's a keyboard player. And uh, Mr. Rogers is his name. Um Dave Rogers right. and uh so he came to my Paloma Faith gig Amazing. in Manchester and I hadn't seen him since school <laughs> since I was 13 and <sighs> I was just said to him I want to say thank you because you have no if it wasn't for you me and Emily wouldn't be playing drums yeah. he is the reason we play drums that's incredible uh, and he was it was it was really emotional and he was just like you know that he that he talks about me and Emily every day to his students apparently He's like, yeah. talks about him about, if you work hard and you're good at what you do and you love it you can go far, you know? And, and so it was just, it was, yeah, such an amazing reconnection with him. So I'm still in uh, touch with him. Yes, but now we're in touch. If I go to Manchester, he comes to the shows and stuff like that. Sure. So it's lovely. Like we've become friends now. I keep calling yeah. him sir though. I can't, <laughs> I can't call him Dave because I'm. <laughs> he's still a teacher to me. You know what I mean? He's weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's a teacher. And I'm like, hi, sir. He's like, you know, you know, you have not call me sir anymore. I'm like, yeah, but oh, I lovely. can't. It's just weird. <laughs> oh, but, see, yeah. respectful. See, that's what that is. <laughs> it is. It is. It totally. is. It's yeah. nice. That's quite nice, I think. <laughs> but obviously, you know, it, it, I, I would love to talk about every artist you've played for, but we'd be here yeah. probably till next week. Yeah, so. sorry. Yeah. No, no, it. it's, it's I, 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 you know, I'm aware that I know how busy you are. So um, um, let's let's skip forward to kind of 2015 yeah. to Simple Minds. Obviously, um, quite a well-known band. I think they call them a heritage band these days, which I don't know is a compliment or not, but, you know, um, but an amazing band with an amazing back catalogue of music. That must have been yeah. a thrill, right? Yeah, no, they, I mean, getting that, yeah, no, getting the gig with them has been, like, incredible. Mm. Um, obviously, obviously, a lot of the stuff they recorded was made before I was born. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when I was a teenager, I did discover Simple Minds. So I yeah. am actually a fan anyway, yeah. even though they're not exactly my generation. Mm -hmm. um, but I did, as a teenager, I got into, I, I was into their early, the earlier albums, the more kind of art house, yeah. electronic, electronica, um, amb like kind of, they're kind of weirder stuff, actually. Yeah, yeah. A lot sure. of people don't realise that they were that kind of band and they mm. have, you know, that's how I sort of knew them. I, I wasn't actually, I mean, I like their hits, but that wasn't what, kind of drew me like to them um but um yeah they're an incredible band their, their back catalogue is insane you know it's, mm. it's it's they've got i think 19 albums or 20 wow. maybe now uh so it's you know the amount of songs they have to pick for a set <laughs> there's a lot of song learning you know yeah. for a rehearsal say and they like to just pull things out of the bag so i've got to learn a lot of stuff there's a lot yeah. of material that we've got to learn and then we change it that's the thing. They like to keep it, keep it fresh, you know. But yeah, I mean, I started with them. Um, the first thing I did with them was the acoustic album. Yeah, so I came in actually on percussion with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's how it kind of started because I actually played percussion with Brian Ferry when I first joined Brian Ferry. Right, okay. Um, so I did play percussion as well. But I say percussion, it was more standing up, still had elements of a drum kit. Yeah. Um, and percussion elements, but it was kind of drums and percussion, really. So that yeah. kind of percussion, not like congas and stuff like that. It's, yeah, you know, sure. A hybrid kind of setup so yeah it's been amazing playing with them um and you know they're like my family now and they're just yeah they're just they're really lovely people you know first and foremost and well, yeah well like it's a big family you know we're all it's just such a good um you know 
uh, vibe, you know, in the camp. So. And they they go for it on stage as well, don't they? There's no there's no half measures. Um, you know, it's, no. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're perhaps not as young as they were. None of us are, but and the, but there's no holding back. It's like you're having this, and, and you know, I've seen. I've never seen them live, but I've seen footage on YouTube and, uh, you know, it's, it's full on, isn't it? Yeah, they are there. You, yeah. You've seen Jim Kerr, right? Jim, he yeah. runs around like a lunatic. He's like, when he gets on stage, he just, he is, he's incredible. He's, his energy and just, just how he just, he really wants his whole thing is, he, you know, he wants the crowd to have a great time. Mm. So he's so involved. He's so, um, He's just, he's just, a, he's, he's just, wow. He's just a force. When I first joined them, I was like, I was shocked. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, just the way <laughs> he just, he just, yeah, he's just, he's just got, yeah, that, and the energy and, and the amount of, the amount of energy he expends just in a yeah. gig. He's running around like a lunatic. He's doing like yoga moves. He's like <laughs> bending backwards, like spinning the mic. Like he's, he's mad. I was like, oh my God, he's as mad as me. This is great because I'm. I'm sure you've seen. Like I, I yes. go, a bit, I go, I lose my mind a little bit on stage. That's my kind of playground. I just, I love, I love performing. Um, always yeah. have done, and so we're on the same page. So yeah. me and Jim, we always have like such a laugh. So the gigs are just fantastic. Um, it just, yeah, it just works. And Charlie as well on guitar, he's like holding it down. But he's got, you know, he's doing his thing. But he's got a lot of energy. He, he yeah. performs in a different way. You know, they've got different. Um, they're very different. Uh, Jim and Charlie, how they work, but mm. it works as a, as a, as a team, as a, as a, you know, as a collab, as, yeah, as a collaborative team. Yeah, of course, it works. I mean, um, and, and yeah, it's been just a, a pleasure. Well, you, you mentioned, and it's quite an important word, really. You mentioned performing the songs. You're not playing them; you're performing them, aren't you? It's 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 a whole. It's a visual thing as well, isn't it? The way you play, you know, uh, you don't take any prisoners, that's for sure. But with, with you know, with great technique and a great feel with it, and and it, it, I think you're a, a, a fantastic fit for the band. I really do, and I'm sure you wouldn't be there otherwise. Let's be honest. Well. Oh, thank you. That, that's very kind of you to say. Thanks. I mean, um, yeah, for me, like performing uh, in the live setting, performing has always been just as important as you're playing. Mm. So obviously, you know, my dad being an actor, when I had when I got the Favours gig, you know, he would sit with me and go, right, OK, and go, OK. And I'd play and he'd go, OK, drumsticks a bit higher. OK, move your head <laughs> a bit. And we'd like he'd get me so that it, there you go. That looks that looks great. So I worked, I work a lot on my performance. People don't realise it's something I've actually spent time on. As much yeah. as my playing, like having lessons and working on technique, working on different styles, etc. I've also spent hours. I video myself and I go, do I like, you know, why can't the drummer be as interesting to watch as the singer? Sure. You're all on stage, you're all you're putting on a show. People have paid good money, you know, the hard-earned money to come and see you. They want to see a show, they want to, they want to see you enjoying it. Yes. You know, they want to. They want to feel a connection. So, yeah, for me, performing is just as important as, as playing. And that's something mm. I've always equally spent time on. People go, oh, you perform really well. I'm thinking, well, I've worked, I've, I've spent time on it, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's not it's been just, a thing that's just happened. I have actually spoken about it and gone, right. It's not a coincidence. You know I mean? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah. okay, you know, and, and, and I do love performing and... Um, yeah, and Simple Minds are the same. They want they're all about the show as much as they are about the playing and getting the songs, getting the sound right, yeah, getting the set to sound good. You know, they they want that. So yeah, so I guess that you're right. It is a good fit. We're all on the same page. Yeah, definitely. Um, with, with live gigs. I mean, and I, I have my I have two favorite drum fills in the whole world. I think you probably know where this is going. The first one is um, Diamonds and Pearls, Prince. You Me know, too. you, you I, I, oh. I, Michael, Michael Bland was one of my earliest guests and I spoke to him ab yeah. about this. Oh, wow. Asked oh, yeah. How, yeah, how it came about. Um, and obviously the, the other Phil, <laughs> you know which one it is, don't you? The Mel Gainer classic, I know of the course. One. Yeah, don't you forget about don't me. Don't you forget about me. <laughs> now, do you, how do you go about that Phil? Because is, is it one of those Phil's <laughs> that you have to play it like Mel played it or do you put your own twist on that? So, like, so with a lot of the Simple Mind songs in general, um, mm. I feel like the parts, a lot of the drum parts, obviously Mel Gaynor is, is a hero of mine. And, yeah. you know, the drum parts for me are signature drum parts. So sure. I always think I've got to honour these parts. So the, even the beat, the same, I, I generally stick to the parts and I yeah. play them how they are played. Yes. Obviously, because I'm playing them, I naturally, 
actually will do it in my own way. Yeah, yeah. But the actual part that I'm playing. So, if, yeah, for, yeah. So, for example, the drum beat for Don't You Forget About Me, I'm playing pretty much exactly what Mel did on the record, the few different variations, but the actual part is the same. And that drum fill, I play it, yeah, I'm playing exactly what he did. Good. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it'd be, it'd be like distasteful in my eyes. To yeah. Play. It, it's part of the song. It's it's, it's an amazing feel. It's one of my favourite feels. Yeah. I mean, never, it's really, it's quite, whenever that moment comes, it's always, there's a lot of pressure. So we're at the gig and we're, you know, we're doing, <laughs> I can see all the fans going. Waiting, waiting, come on. Is she going to do it? Looking at me. And all the band are looking at me. I'm like, okay, I better not mess this up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, got to really <laughs> concentrate yeah. here. Because it is quite a tricky feel, you know. It's, it it's, is. It's, Very rudimental, isn't it? It's wicked. My favourite part of the film is at the end, you know, um, is that? Beautiful. Yeah. That, yeah. That That's... for me is, is the killer. That, I just love that. Yeah. And, love and, 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 at the end. It's wicked. You, uh, my, my pet hate is when you hear it on the radio, because it's, it's kind of, it's a long song anyway. It's kind of towards the end. Yeah. And you'll be waiting for it in the in my van, you know, I'm like, here it comes. And then the radio, the DJ will fade it out before it. And it's just like, oh, it's like, oh. it's heartbreaking. It's just like, do you know what you do? Uh, yeah. How can they do that? You can't, I know. that's like, that should be illegal. I know. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad about that anyway. I'm glad that's, uh, I'm glad we've taken care of that. Glad you got that. Yeah, you've got it out of the way. <laughs> I don't I like it. a lot about that film. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, I haven't written any questions down. That's the only thing I've written. <laughs> oh, <laughs> So freestyling totally there, but yeah, that's uh, so that's my two favourite films. I mean, the other one, Michael, yeah. just you know, you'll know, you'll know, oh. that one. everybody knows that. I film. still can't play that bloody film. I still can't play it. <laughs> he, he he couldn't really tell me how he did it. Uh, he he oh. couldn't he couldn't really explain it because he doesn't really? he doesn't read. He said it was like a splubber. Oh. He was trying to vocalise it, and it was like doesn't make a lot of sense there but the, no it doesn't uh, it's, like, it's on an odd it's like odd time it's like he comes in a weird it's in a weird place and it, it, it's all it yeah odd. i will so, um so what, what i shall do i shall send you the little clip where he talks about it and i'll, I'll send it to you so you can actually I'd have a look at it because he's, oh, he's really cool but um so look, obviously i don't want to keep you too long but i would before okay. you, um right back at the beginning you, you talk about the soundtrack for uh, soundtrack for, for marvel's black widow um now, obviously, it's your first film, and and you said it's kind of an orchestral thing. I've I've had a listen to some bits of it on YouTube. Uh, sorry, on uh, on Spotify, mm -hmm. and there's one. That's the only other thing I've written down there because um, Red Rising. Did, did you play on that? Was that is that? I think so. Has, I mean, can you hear drums in it? Yeah, it's like an epic. It's not Kit yeah. though. It's it's snare drum and toms and just yeah. massiveness. Yeah. Is that is that your that playing? Is it? It is indeed, yeah. Very sure. cool. Yeah. Soaked in reverb, yeah. it just sounds massive, and that yeah. is that. Um, I mean, I don't know. I've never played on a movie soundtrack. I wouldn't know. How do you go about? Are you there playing with the orchestra, or are you are you done at a separate time? How does it work? Well, um, I think. Well, it depends on the session because mm. it, it works differently on on different sessions. Sure. Um, on that day, um, so we were at Abbey Road the full orchestra were there i recorded i recorded there were some parts i think i did with the orchestra but mainly i recorded yeah. on my own um to the guide tracks which had a sort of guide orchestra on them yeah, obviously sure. the orchestra were going to replace those parts mm -hmm. um so it's more like i had like different pieces it was more like you know battle scenes this it was all like different sort of yeah yeah pieces not really songs yeah uh, and lawn is so lawn balf the composer is is really he's really interesting the way he works and he hired me you know he he wanted he wanted john bonham he wanted rock and roll but with his pieces so with yeah. the orchestra even though that's, that's cool. kind of even though it's classical he wanted that vibe mm. um so he kind of gave me free free reign really he just said so I just, you know, played and made up parts. He was directing me like in the booth as I was yeah. playing, going, oh, I like that. Play that for four bars. Okay, play that. More of that. Don't use the snare there. Play the floor top. So it was like he was kind of directing me as I was playing, but he, yeah. I was just playing freely to cool. the music, really. I mean, I, I did have a score that I had to score beforehand. Sure. You know, the drum music written out. So I, I, I do read music as well. Obviously, yeah, I did my sure. grades. Mm. Um, I have lessons. So I can read music. So I had that just as a starting point to see what mm. lawn sort of 
um what the piece what happened in the piece yeah um but yeah it, on the day it was just mainly just <laughs> wow just freestyling uh, so, and were you were you yeah. sat behind an actual drum kit or sat behind a snare drum and lots of toms and things or were you behind a kit as no, you traditionally would no I, I sat behind a kit just like mm. this um and uh lawn was like okay no snare here yeah just as i said he was directing me kind of in the booth um he's amazing lawn just how his mind works um mm. he loves drummers he loves he's got amazing sense of rhythm um his compositions are always just out there they're interesting they're yeah. complex they're just it's just, they're just brilliant pieces of music you know um so i was just it was a joy to work with him you know and and to continue working with him so um yeah, it's been great. It's been great. And I love the fact that he just, he lets me kind of do what I want. He, he lets me have free reign, which is really nice. Rather than, I, you know, here's the music, yeah. which is what generally happens in, yeah, in film sure. sessions or TV sessions. It's, here we go. And you hire players who come and read, and that's how it generally yeah. is. But he wanted something different. He wanted to not go down that route in a way. He wanted it to have a bit more, uh, yeah, just a different approach. Sounds so, about sounds about perfect, that doesn't it? Really, you know. Yeah, get, perfect for me. Anyway, yeah. like, that's the kind of gig I like doing. You know, I like I just play, I like just play what I want to play. Really, yeah. I'm not. I, I don't mind reading, as I said. I you know, sure. Sometimes where it's needed, mm -hmm. um, and that's fine. You know, and I'll, I'll do that. But what I really enjoy is playing from the heart, just playing what I feel in that moment. Really, and, and I'm pretty certain that's why he'd have booked you because he wants you, not not him. Written, you know, writing down whatever this is what I want yeah. when, when, you know, with, with respect, a machine can play that, couldn't it? And, <laughs> you know, we could get some samples True. and, and, but you know, if they want, wants a bit of the rock and roll, um, you know, a bit of the Mantis stuff in there. <laughs> got some Mantis. I've got it, Lord. <laughs> double kick. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I've not played double kick for years, but yeah. <laughs> oh, dear me. Fantastic. Well, look, Cherise, yeah. I've taken up more of your time than I said I would. I always do this and I apologise. Um, no, no, that's great. I love <laughs> talking to you. Thank you for having me on. And like, it's so nice to have like, yeah, really good questions. And um, yeah, it's been great. It's it's a, honestly the pleasure is all mine. And I really appreciate it. So well, look, let's hope we um, we see you back out with Simple Minds uh, very soon doing, doing what you do. And let's hope um, it all kicks back in sooner rather than later. And, yeah, so uh, we're kicking back. So we we're actually yes, yeah, so that our tour starts next year. Uh, cool. We start uh, in yeah, so yeah, our tour is is out there. So we start brilliant um, in Europe and the UK in March. Uh, we've got an arena tour, and then throughout the year we'll, we'll be doing festivals. Yeah, so next year is is like a full on year for Simple Minds, and then obviously Amazing. hopefully the album will be released. I'm not sure when the new album. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming up with Simple Minds, which is really exciting. exciting you know i can't wait yeah. to get back on the road yeah can't wait to get back superb thanks once again sharice it's been an absolute pleasure my pleasure thank see you, you soon me. take care thanks bye-bye bye-bye